All right, we're back. Uh, for round two is going to start shortly, but we thought we would take a look at this uh, <clears throat> Yeti Throne Room deck from Howdy Do. Yeah, uh, Throne Room recently got a rework, I believe. Uh, this card definitely did something different last time. Uh, last time I uh, I was playing. Oh yeah, yeah. It used to give Aegis. Now when you're Whenever one or more of your units hit the enemy player, your heroes get plus one, plus one. After the third, you play a 7-7 seven, seven Duraka. Okay, so it still plays the same units, but instead of getting Aegis, now all your heroes get plus one, plus one. And it looks uh, like this also... spellcraft is the same. Uh, yeah, Savager, which is, uh, which is uh, the one cost, triple primal, uh, give a unit killer and overwhelm. Uh, yeah, this is a, this is a really this is a really sweet uh, sweet deck. Uh, we got we got a, a lot of heroes. We got the the, the basic Zultan Ambassador package, and then all all the heroes you can count. We got we got Plunk, we got Wamp and Mizo, Crunch, which is which is one of my all time favorites. Uh, got uh, Wump, of course, the classic, and Bam Sneaky Peaky, which is uh, <laughs> which I'm always glad to see. He's he's, he's such a good boy. Oh, definitely some of the best names in Eternal in this deck. I'm also a big fan of uh, Derry. Derry oh. uh, used to cost two back in the day at one for an 0-4 that potentially turns into a 4-4. I'm a big fan. Yeah, Derry Cafein has has received like a, a handful of buffs since uh, since uh, her release and has, has kind of become a bit of a, of a front main stage. So it's a very... Very good cheap disruptive tool uh, that you can we can we can end up doing a lot with. Uh, this deck is also playing the the classic Yeti's market of invasive species plus inspired prank. Like, do we do you really need any more? I'm just excited to see this deck in action. This looks really cool. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are being informed the feature match is going to start soon, uh, and the match is Apple Chips versus Sunnyvale. Apple Chips on uh, a Menace Relic Aggro, and uh, Sunnyvale on on very classic, very you know cut and dry, cut and dry Rakana Aggro. Uh, playing uh, playing the uh, three copies of the new Ryo de uh, detail from uh, from Unleashed. Ooh, Riot detail. 2-2 two, two with charge. Summon, give Riot detail. Two, plus 2 plus 2 or taunt this turn. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a very flexible unit. It can eat a 1-drop or it can also just like swing in for 4. That's like a big chunk of damage that you're taking right off the health count of uh, of your opponent and you know your 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 Rakano you want you want to count 25 and that and four damage counts for a lot these days. Absolutely. Yeah charge really adds a lot of versatility to these uh Rakano decks. Um uh Sunnyvale is also playing a copy of Give Chase uh on the market which is another addition from uh Unleashed which is a five uh double Rakano influence play two units from the top five cards of your deck that costs three or less, they get plus two, plus two, and charge. And at the end of your turn, you put them back into your hand. That's not that's not a big burst of uh, of uh, potential damage right there. On the other side, Apple Chips is playing Nico and Tomb of the Azure Mage, which are both interesting new cards. It looks like they've got kind of a uh, a frenzy sub theme to this hmm. uh, throne room deck. Oh, they are playing. They are playing four copies of Tormented Crown, alongside, alongside, of course, Auto Tread. Which, as soon as, as soon as the frenzy mechanic was um, was revealed, uh, you know, a bunch, a bunch of cards around Auto Tread kind of, kind of started dying mysteriously. Uh, <laughs> we, we have not, we have not been able to identify the uh, the assailants yet, but. Uh, We'll, we'll we'll keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, my team was convinced that Auto Tread was going to get nerfed, and then because we were all like, "What are they going to do? Nerf everything else?" And then they did. <laughs> <laughs> you are clearly not familiar with uh, with Die Wolf's Modus Operandi. <laughs> hey, we have uh, we have a Cabal Scavenger here. 
and uh, we're going into a tormented crown, getting a little bit of life, getting a bit of a, of a life hedge against the aggressive deck. That's what you want to. That's what you want to see um, on on your on your opening hand. Uh, there you got a, lot, a bunch of chip interaction. Uh, Auto thread actually quite good at picking up all of the all of these uh, all these small units, especially when uh, when it can also just generate value as a frenzy enabler. Very very versatile card. Auto thread. Yeah, but actually this execution or it, this scavenger is going to do a lot of the work uh, for Apple Chips. Every relic he plays is going to ping, and that's going to keep triggering the crown until. I mean, it's going to flip next turn. Yeah, it's um, it, you know, the, these these little one life things they might not seem like much, but it it definitely ends up adding up. Uh, Sunny will not choose it, choosing not to contract the um. Uh, the Shafka Evangel here. And torching the Cabal Scavenger, which is probably a good idea. You want to get that out of the way as soon as possible. And here we see here we see a little, uh, very very uh, <laughs> very classic combo. A uh, recent uh, that was that was discovered as soon as the frenzy was spoiled. It's a particular Nico uh, Auto Thread can discard Nico to uh, deal one damage to the opponent, which will trigger Nico's frenzy, which will then redraw Nico with his attack buffed. So. That is a that is a pr very very consistent source of damage from uh, from Apple Chips. Yeah, pretty much as much power as Apple Chips has. That's how much damage they can deal with the auto trade. That yeah. And once the crown flips, they'll start drawing cards every time they do it. Uh, I've been I've been told that uh, being able to flame blast your opponent every turn is uh, is pretty good. It does seem okay. Although Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale does have a lot of pressure here, they do. Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale going into the market here. Uh, they have quite a lot of options. They have their market consists of Harmless Question, Finest Hour, Pristine Light, Give Chase, and Stormhold Knife. Um, hmm. Oh, they're going. They're going for the premium Give Chase. Uh, Sunnyvale also choosing to berserk the Shafka Evangel here. And Apple Chips choosing not to block here. Nope, just gonna take the damage, doesn't want to risk a combat trick. Oh, but now that they know that there's no pause, the block is in. Uh, the flip side of, uh, of, uh, Crown, of Tormented Crown is Curse of Torment. Uh, which is uh, the oh oh right I'm 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 so sorry uh, so Curse of Torment which is the flip side of uh, of uh, Tormented Crown makes Sunnyvale's units reckless so there is no reason not to berserk the Shafka Evangel there because it is already reckless oh that's right I forgot about the reckless and of course the much more relevant side uh, of of Curse of Torment is when a unit hits you or the cursed player draw a card. Which, uh, which, <laughs> auto which, thread will trigger, of course. <laughs> yeah. So now auto thread is dealing a damage, drawing a card <laughs> for free, <laughs> because this, uh... the Nico is just infinite fuel. <laughs> wow. This uh, this seems like a very fair engine. <laughs> and then the auto thread attacks and draws another card. <laughs> oh my lord. Sunnyvale kind of on the back foot here. It seems. Um. Yeah, and, and that's another card for uh, for Apple Chips. Playing, oh, no. uh, <laughs> playing a plunder Stone unit. Hammer into an auto shred. It's not really where you want to be. <laughs> if Sunnyvale, uh, so Sunnyvale has just plundered uh, a card into a Justice Sigil. If if they can survive to see the next turn, uh, they they can uh, they can try to high roll off of the gift chase, uh, and uh, and that might might be able to swing the game in their favor. We'll see. Oh yeah, they could just potentially swing for the win if they got something big enough. Exactly. Uh, meanwhile, Apple Chips here are just so much value that they're holding in their hands. What does Apple Chips have in his market? Let's see. Oh, obstructive flicker. Oh no. Okay. Well, oh, dear lord. Give Chase is going to have some trouble against that. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, uh, give chase is uh, is is definitely not a fast spell. Fortunately, yeah. apple chips, apple chips with the with the absolute 
fantastic banger of a read. Yeah, yeah just uh, er, complete er, er, stranglehold on this game, and that's and gonna do the, it. And there's the concession. <clears throat> oh dear lord. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, a lot, a lot of people were looking towards Auto Thread when uh, when Frenzy got uh, got spoiled, and uh, well, it's it's. It's it's definitely all that was promised and more. It seems. Yeah, that did not disappoint. That that, that Nico powering the auto tread was just gross before the crown, and and once the crown started kicking in. Um, yeah, well, once Curse of Torment uh, got got, it, it was just adding insult to injury. Yeah, that uh, is a lot to come back from. So if Sunny you're Sunny Bill, uh, what? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What are you looking to uh, to do in this match? Did, I think you have to close it out quickly, right? Yeah, that is that is absolutely your uh, your best strategy. You want to you want to get in uh, you want to get in quick. You want to get in fast and hopefully uh, not run into into obstructive flicker and just just get a good nice high roll off of give chase and just get a big nice lethal swing when the opponent is at what seems. To them, like a comfortable life total. This is definitely a a pure race matchup because you cannot uh, you cannot compete with the value generated by Apple Chips's uh, Apple Chips's cards. Yeah, and actually, I just checked. Sunnyvale has no relic interaction at all, so he really just has to kind of come in hard and fast because once those relics get set up, there's there's no way to take them down. Sunnyvale here with a pretty slow hand consisting of uh, a bunch of banners. Oh yeah, that depleted power is very rough. Although really... Apple Chips isn't really doing a ton. He's, he's setting stuff up, but there's no pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no pressure on the right side, which means Apple Chips can just take these turns and, and relax and kind of set in. Um, uh, so this is, a, this is a very unfortunate hand for Sunnyvale. Means they they cannot you know come out swinging, which is what they need to do in this matchup. Sunnyvale also taking uh, taking things uh, <laughs> going right away for the gift chase. Sunnyvale taking taking things easy, playing a Winchest Merchant, setting up their 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 definitive game plan. I see two tombs of the Azure Mage coming down, uh, uh, setting up of course for the. Um, uh, what's uh, what's that market spell's name? <laughs> For the Condemn next turn. There it is. Which will, of course, trigger both relics as a, as a frenzy. Yeah, that's a lot of filtering. And if we draw cards like Nico, they just go straight to the... Putting them in the so, void uh, is basically drawing them. <laughs> so, so Sunny has a, a couple of a couple of different plays here. Uh, we're gonna see Styro's eyes comes down, getting getting uh, getting Glinger influence, grabbing that uh, that very very important fifth power, uh, so that you know give Chase the most important card in the deck can come uh, can come out in in time. I see Raya Detail swinging in for four here. And whatever Sonny saw, he liked, because I, I think it kept it stayed on top. So interested to see what's coming off the top. Apple Chips condemn. Draws Apple the, that chips. Nico. Wow. Oh wow. Oh, he's got three of those in play. Holy oh, cow. Oh dear lord, I I did not know that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Apple Chips going for the for the for the greedy play here, sort of, with the with the no one to hold them. Um, actually, I, I guess no one to hold him is actually not greedy at all in this deck because it, it's basically just a two tour for Nico, and Nico does not actually need to be in play. It is just enabled as soon as you have the auto thread. That's actually quite yeah, it's a... basically just another copy of Nico. That's that's totally true. Yeah, it's quite quite a clever inclusion by Apple Chips actually. Another star's eyes. Uh, we're probably just gonna see give chase here. No reason not to. I think. Especially if you if you hit another ride detail off the gift chase, you just like completely wipe your opponent's board uh, and just getting for a bunch of damage. Okay, just you could you could opt to silence the kindling carver if you're afraid of some kind of card draw. Getting into the red zone here, and uh, right after, yeah, Sunnyvale uh, looks like Sunnyvale was uh, was looking at your line. 
Conlin Carver yeah. just uh, just becoming a uh, a grenadine token now. Oh, gavel! Off of, I forgot uh, you always. I always forget <laughs> that Stairs Eyes can just randomly get that, and that's it. Apple Chips does not want to mess around with a gavel. He's done. Justice, uh, <laughs> justice cards with random hate text on them. You've never seen that before. Wow! So yeah. that's actually that's the best thing that Sunnyvale can do is Stairs Eyes. That's how he wins the matchup. Yeah. St Stire's Eyes is, is, is one of the most versatile cards we've seen, we've seen printed uh, in, in recent memory. Uh, you, got, uh, you got a buff, which is just like great burst damage. You got a, a adjudicated gavel, which just kills some decks outright. Uh, and of course, you've got the lingering influence, which is just like a good, a good pick. You can cycle power, get a, get a scry alongside your 2 2 flyer. Yeah, it really does it all. And um, in this matchup, actually, Apple Chips also does not have any relic removal. So once that gavel hits, Ouch. it's staying on forever. They, I believe they do not have any form of face ages either. Unless nope. <laughs> I'm... Uh, yeah, oof. Ouch. Oh no, uh, Miss Veldrake. They can, oh, Miss Veldrake, of course. The, the one they singular can, they copy They can know when to Ms. hold Veldrake. them. <laughs> well, they, they can condemn to know when to hold them for the Miss Veldrake, for the Aegis, if they have that much power open. No, no when to hold them, proving to be, uh, proving to be again, one of, uh, one, of the more, uh, one of the more interesting cards available to, to Eternal players. Oh, no when to hold them is a slow spell. I don't know why I thought it was fast. Never mind, that doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see Ikaria uh, come down here uh, again. Overall, pretty pretty slow start from Sunnyvale. Uh, Apple Chips starting on on the forward with uh, the Cabal Scavenger, which again we've we've seen that damage slowly that damage and that life gain slowly pile up, and it it does make a big difference. Yep, Condemn is gonna take down Ikaria before she can ult. And then I expect we'll just see a rat cage here. Yeah, that is. Uh, oh no, we, oh, we see nope. a, uh, a second scavenger. Uh, an open contract. That that makes sense. You 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 do want to stop uh, to stop the initial bleeding as much as possible. Uh, that condemn play was so brutal against Sunnyvale. Uh, their, uh, I assume their plan was to ultimate Karia, get that that fur justice influence, which will make their. Uh, would make their their silix undepleted, so they could go uh, they could go uh, they could go silix in the torch and just like set up their set up their game plan and start swinging in. Yeah, but that uh, that did not work out due to Akaria going down, and so the silix is depleted, and that really did slow down Sunnyvale a lot. Uh, on the bright side, Sunnyvale is holding Jack Mercenary Hunter, which uh, will be able to get double damage off of the sigil that Sunnyvale is holding. Unfortunately, Apple Chips, if Apple Chips can get to that 4 power, they do have Waxing Moon, and Waxing Moon lines, uh, lines up very awkwardly against Sunny, uh, Sunnyvale's board strategy. Board sending strategy. Yeah, so Sunnyvale actually has to play the sigil in order to play the Jack. So, not going right. to get double damage on the Jack. But oh. it doesn't really need it because once he Jack just cleans up the scavengers anyway. So I have I've gone on record saying that uh, that influence is uh, is fake and free in the throne, uh, and I guess I guess this is one of the one of the occasions where uh, where I am proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, those triple. Co oh no! See, no, 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 see, see. <laughs> He influences fake and frown people. I don't know why he worries so much. Nice. Just play a bunch of evangels. Just play. Still needs to play the power in order to activate the jack. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this is this is perfectly fine. I see no no issue whatsoever. We can pitch the evangel here. Yep, exactly. And finally stop the stop the bleeding. Uh So, meanwhile, Apple Chips does not have the fourth power. So, yeah, we're just going to see an Aegis and an attack. Oh, but that's a good block, too. 
I guess Helena can contract and save the Stonehammer. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Hmm. Stonehammer would be able to swing in for at least three. Not sure about that attack. Uh, don't know what Sunnyvale is uh, is trying to get through there. Oh, it has reckless. It has to attack. Oh, oh of course. So reading uh, reading cards is not is not. Uh... <laughs> this face Aegis on Apple Chips is doing tons of work because Sunnyvale has the stairs eyes in hand, ready to gavel as soon as he's given it the green yeah, light. It even if the star's eyes is not is not relevant uh, super relevant in the current board state as um, as apple chips do not, does not have a frenzy enabler uh the face ages will make it very awkward if apple chips does uh, does manage to to hit that ever so important uh ever so important um uh auto thread i see karia calm down and immediately ultimate for that for that very important fifth power Oh, there's power four, but it's not a shadow source, so we're not going to be able to uh, to cast that <coughs> waxing moon just yet. And we got to see street urchin twist here. Draw a shadow sigil, which uh, which clears uh, sunny star black. So that's that's pretty nice for them. So usually, I think you want to use um, the. Uh, what's it called? Give chase to yep. finish your opponent. But I think in this case, yeah, it's worth just running it out to get the damage while you can. Yeah, not only that, but Apple Chips is uh, Apple Chip has uh, has four units out, uh, but only two, one only one of them is capable of blocking, which is which is huge. Oh, uh, Sunnyvale hitting two trick shot ruffians. <laughs> wow, that is a lot of damage out of nowhere. A huge burst of damage. That is uh, 6, 11, 14, plus that is 17 damage coming right Apple Chip's face. And look at all those units that just can't block. Uh, and Apple Chips has to block here, otherwise they are dead. Wow. What a turn. Give Chase, uh, you know, being able to access uh, units from the top of your deck with a, with a big burst to their to their potential damage is uh, it's pretty good sometimes. And the Not... Trickshot Ruffians go back into Sunnyvale's hand for yeah, yet another, that's even better. <laughs> an, another huge burst of damage coming up next turn. And Apple Chips has no possible response to that, so we're probably going to see them scoop them up here. Yeah, I think we're done. I mean, yeah, you can attack with Nico and maybe pick off. Nope. I see a sure storm here for a little face ages refresh. Very necessary. And these the, the zero cost trick shot ruffians coming down. <laughs> uh, notably, the units from Gift Chase do not keep charge. Which is not super relevant on these three short ruffins, as they are pretty fragile, but something to keep in mind. Yeah, um, there were there were a lot of people in the community that uh, were pretty doubtful of uh, of give chase when it was first revealed. Um, but the potential is there, as we as we as we've seen in in this in this matchup, that is is really all about all about speed. Yeah, that was that was impressive. Okay, so we're. Looks like we're switching over to a backup match, uh, where we Ooh. have Game Grump versus. I believe this is uh, Roshi. That's correct. Oh, versus Roshi. Okay. Yeah, Roshi is in Argentport mid range, while Game Grump is playing uh, Elysian Jural, uh, also known as Spellisian, or or Ellie spells. If you uh, if you're more of a connoisseur, running a so very it looks. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say it looks like at least for Roshi's deck, it's pretty much the same thing that it's been. The only new cards I can see are Tinker Unionists. Uh, uh, other yes, than that, they are. It's... 
They are running a full playset of Thinker Unionist. Uh, they are they are also running one display of Will uh, in the market, which is one of the new uh, new cycle of displays from uh, from Unleashed. Okay. This is an interesting deck. This is so so Roshi's on the Scepter Infinite Moldermock token nonsense. Um and Game Gromp is doing what Legion spells? Yep, it is it is a very it is generally a, a pretty fair deck. Uh it mostly consists of uh the uh a pretty basic draw engine. Alongside Wump and Mizzo and Master Conjurer, which can very easily start generating uh, multiple uh, multiple Storm Dancers on uh, like a, a Storm Dancer on every on 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 every turn, really. That like has a lot of a lot of axes of interaction and a lot of axes uh, of stopping your opponent's interaction, which is just as important. Absolutely, struck well, with flicker. Know- Huge of flicker here. A ton of work. <laughs> do we see the second one? Yep, we do. Second one to kill that whispering wind, which uh, is, is potentially very, very dangerous. Uh, free throw, absolutely fantastic, uh, fantastic pickup for Game Grump here. Yep, you. We don't love turning one of these cards into a snowball, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And that flyer needs to die. <laughs> Um, turning the, uh, the, the, uh, Master Conjurer there, I'm not sure I agree. Um, but I, I guess having, uh, having an extra, an extra engine with two draws is, uh, is never bad. Yeah, I think they just, they just value the draws over the potential double spell in a turn, given that they had no spells at that time. Wow, it's... absolutely, absolutely brutal top deck here for uh, for Roshi. Generating, uh, generating two uh, two blockers. However, Game Grump does have uh, does have primal etchings. They can go into their market for trials and tribulations. Okay, interesting. They are short uh-huh. one one. Uh, oh no, two blue influence shy of of dealing. Mm-hmm enough damage with that and at least one of the Geralds is gonna have to attack but how do they deal with uh, the Iraq? Iraq is just lethal right? Uh, Iraq is 2-3 uh, is there any way that Roshi can buff the uh... oh it's uh, I'm sorry it's a 2-3 I'm I can't see it that that well and uh, I was thinking the Spire Shadows deck where it was a uh... <laughs> A four three. Oh my 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 bad. Uh, so uh, yeah yeah. So so uh, so uh, Game Ram cannot actually go to the market for trials and tribulations because if uh, if uh, they kill the uh, the razor bots, that will buff uh, Arak and that will be lethal. Ah okay, there it is. So they are in a very very awkward spot on this board. Kind of thinking through all their options. Their their sideboard. Their their market consists of dazzle. Trials and Tribulations, Mirror Image, Solid Spell Shaper, and Helio the Skywinder. So, we see an attack from Jural. I guess we're just gonna pray to get a spell. Yeah, Jural, Jural is, is obligated to, uh, to block, and that will, that will put, uh, that will put uh, Roshi's Fire just, just in the range of lethal. So, now we can get a dazzle to live one more turn yeah yep. that that seems to be the uh the only the only uh truly viable line here gland path cutter for roshi so uh so gang ramp will get to leave yet another turn so if uh, if you play the dazzle here you uh, you can um, you can hope to uh, to berserk Jural and um, draw into a nope yep there there, there we are just uh, coping them up. I think uh, it was because Roshi had a quiver in play and uh, buffed quiver? the rat, so both both units were lethal. Makar's quiver. 
Oh, I did not. I did not know that. Uh, I thought their only their only relic in play was the uh, was the Orion Scepter. Yes, that is that's definitely oof. So not sure what game that was, but it looks like this might be game three. Hey, okay, we are we are being so, informed that uh, we are we are going into game three of that set. Um, game Grum here looking at a rather awkward hand. Uh, this is usually usually one ship this. Uh, you really want to see uh, some of your some of your early value engines such as Wump and Mezo, such as uh, Jural. Uh, and this hand just does not really do anything right now. Yeah, the lack of time source is also uh, a little disappointing, so I would expect to see that go back. Well, meanwhile, Roshi's Roshi... Side, though, yeah, that's... Yeah, Roshi's that's... got a good hand. I think I pretty, keep Roshi's. Pretty solid. Got a, got a Glant Path Gather into... Uh, you, got, you got the Unionist uh, for when you can get uh, a Relic. That can generate a pretty pretty big wide board that even if it gets eaten up by the opponent's blockers, it'll generate a bunch of Warcry triggers for you. Wow, uh, interesting Ooh. game grab didn't take didn't keep that six or didn't keep the, the second seven, went to six instead. That second seven, it looked fine to me, but I think Game Grump was worried that it might have been too slow against an ag a possible aggressive start by Roshi, which is a fair uh, a fair um a fair assertion of that hand, I feel. Yeah, it did have a lot of depleted power. Unfortunately, this six does not look too impressive either. Definitely not okay. looking great. So interesting that Roshi decided to open with Crest instead of leading with a two one. I think I would have liked to see the two one come down. Wow, we see we see uh, we see uh, uh, the cute little synergy here between Steyr's eyes and uh, and these uh, these uh, units that uh, have a threshold effect that when they go to the void by any means, uh, they 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 do the thing. In the in the case of Pathcutter, buffing a unit in hand, which I I assume is going to the to the Wretched Rats or the Unionist. I think it could go either way. Uh, Unionist is actually is probably a better the better the better play. You are correct. I see Banner here from Roshi into Like the Moldermock. There it is. Uh, Moldermock has, is... yeah, it has quite the the, yeah. the, the funny synergy with uh, with Orin Scepter, uh, since uh, Moldermock has decay and damages itself. However, Orin Scepter says that when you play a unit, it gets plus one plus one and ages, uh, which is uh, which basically allows you to 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 make a board of eventually infinite Moldermocks. Oh yeah, well, so it's not plus one, plus one, and Aegis. It's plus one, plus one if it already had Aegis, and then it gets Aegis if it didn't have it. Uh, oh, my so bad. So it my gives bad. Moldermuck Aegis in the first place, and then all, all the copies of Moldermuck, when they pop up, have the Aegis, so they'll have plus one, plus one, and then immediately the Aegis pops because they try and kill themselves. Uh, uh, actually, the Aegis does not pop because Aegis only protects against enemy effects. Oh, true story. Uh, seeing an equivocate on the Moldermark from Game Grump, which, you know, it's pretty reasonable. Moldermark, very, very scary card. And, uh, and I'm sure not as adorable as, as Cassandra will have you, will have you think. <laughs> what did the Moldermark turn into? I can't quite tell. It is a Diang Diangolo Strongarm. Which, uh, for people that do not know, is a uh, four, uh, three mana four one, and and tomb plays a ch an urn of choking embers on the enemy player, which is a one cost relic that exhausts units when they are played. So not the best. <laughs> it's not it's not Turn great, but you know it is it, it definitely blocks blocks Jarrell all day. Which is uh, which is something that you do not mind on this board. Ooh, trials and tribulations, absolute winner for Apple uh, for Game Grom here. Wow, the value of that was just absurd. So not only did we get a three for one, but we also gave plus one plus one to our whole team. 
That was a not big bad at all. Uh, Gengar not attacking with the Jural here. Oh, well, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Uh, Tinker Unionist get unleashed. Uh, casually. Oh, so Tinker Unionist got unleashed because of the urn. So uh, actually, yes, that is, that is actually correct. Yes. <laughs> actually, that four one is a little better than it looked. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And now those Unionists are huge and have taunt, so they must be blocked if they're not dealt with. Yeah, very, very awkward situation for Game Grom's board here. So it looks like he can equivocate and... What is that spell? I think that spell removes a unit. I... Uh, that spell is uh, Stutter Step from the, from the new Unleashed set. It makes a unit disappear and reappear at the start of the next turn. And it is indeed a fast spell. Yeah, so we can temporarily deal with the Unionists, I guess, but they are going to be a problem going forward. <laughs> definitely a dealable with board, but not in any way where you are overly happy about, uh, about the final results. Uh, we also see Roshi holding a, um, a Vicious Rumors in hand. Extremely versatile card. Uh, you can uh, you can basically suffocate an exhausted unit. Uh, you can uh, dark return a unit without the without the plus one plus one, of course. Uh, and also a fourth mode where you can discard all copies of a spell of your choice from the from the opponent's uh, deck, which against uh, illusion spells actually not the worst mode in the in the world. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with the Sinister Rumors. That Shallow Sigil, uh, unfortunately, not quite enough to get, uh, to get Roshi to the, um, to the Tazbu. Okay, the Unionists where... come in, Stutter Step oblige, on uh, blocks, Tile Stutter Step oh, on our... Yeah, of course. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, I feel I feel in this matchup you really want to count on Gerald just drawing drawing your interaction, and uh, hoping that that gets you that gets you over the opponent's uh, the opponent's own. That's definitely the first time I've seen that spell. It's very weird to see a unit just disappear and like can't see where it is, but it's gonna come back soon. <laughs> there, there, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there um, and starter step is. Um, is very uh very importantly is not is not any sort of flicker effect uh it is a car uh, when the car comes back it, it does not replay its summon effect uh and it does keep all uh, all attachments that were previously on it yeah definitely a cool card uh roshi here with is that is that makar squiver uh, looks like a vine grafter. Vine grafter. Okay. So well, I expect to see an A space here to eat the womp. Yeah, very uh, very reasonable line of play. And then probably just play three more unionists because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, uh, well, if if they if they want to be greedy, Roshi could uh, could uh, use the Vine Grafter and give the give the Unionists three Chan. <laughs> yeah, sounds, you could, uh, but it's very it's fair. so slow. I think you just have to put the pressure on while you. Yeah, I, I I definitely think that closing out the game is the line of play here. Uh, but there's definitely there's definitely a difference between the correct line of play and the and the most fun line of play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wisdom gives us our sixth power, our sixth master. Uh, yeah, which turns uh, which turns on master conjurer, which is actually quite good on this board. Um, so as long uh, as long as uh, as Roshi does not manage that fifth um, that fifth shadow influence, uh, Game Grump is not in a bad spot, all things considered. So you can send in the Womp to... Oh, you don't have to send in the Womp, right? Any uh, unit. Uh, womp, yeah. It, 
Wump Wump plays a snowball whenever uh, whenever you attack with any unit. Whenever you attack with one or more units is the is the specific warning. I uh, see a, a trade here. So why did the why did we not get a four four? Because we had already cast two spells before we played it. I believe that might be the case. Yes. Unfortunate. That four I four would have been big game on this board. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot of experience with Master Conjurer, so uh, if that that's how it works, that's uh, it's really rough for Game Grump on this on this board state. Oh no, Roshi with another unionist. <laughs> another right. unionist. Well, so this unionist is not as scary, right? This one is only a two two. Well, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't. I don't think Game Grump will will take that consolation. <laughs> Honestly, I would expect the Vinegrafter to come down, pitch the Taz boot, and give that Unionist, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Regen. Thank you. <laughs> uh, definitely not a bad line of play. Uh, there are a lot of really, really powerful uh, things that uh, Roshi can get out of their market. Uh, Ro there is Roland, Iron Feast, which is, uh, which is so brutal. Uh, and of course, Regent's Tomb, which uh, Roshi can very, very easily protect. But Roshi does not opt for that, just is totally fine playing the Unionist down. I don't know if Choking Emperor is actually putting in the work as well in this, in this board side. Great, uh, great, um, gr great deck building on Roshi's part, putting that Diangolo Strong Arm in their deck, I think. <laughs> Gonna see, gonna see Roshi, uh, Roshi getting for a bunch of damage here. All right. Oh nope. Game grump. He's done. What that's a match! Gonna be, that was gonna be game three. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. So, uh, looks like we might have one more match in the round. Hopefully, uh, the Elysian spells that, that we just seen, uh, it can do a lot of powerful, uh, powerful things. But it is, it is a deck that is, uh, is definitely very, uh, very dependent on its draw sequence. Yeah, oh. absolutely. We're seeing a okay. bunch of, a uh, bunch of kills uh, on our screen right now. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, two killer units just took down, uh, just took down um, the bottom players, uh, the bottom players unit right here, and we have a Xenon Temple that just popped with a World Joiner. So pretty spicy game here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would assume this is game three. Uh, this does seem to be game three, I believe. Uh, no, this is uh, this is. Uh... Yeah, this is, this is game three. This is Hammer Time versus Newer Shadow. Hammer Time seems to be on a pretty classic uh, Xenon Sacrifice uh, decklist. Uh, meanwhile, Newer Shadow also playing a, a Throne Mainstay with Combralix. Yep, definitely used to seeing both of these decks quite strong. That World Joiner, though, that a big boy. I'm not sure how Newer Shadow is going to be able to get through that. This is, uh, this is actually a big girl. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, the um, the decks, I believe they are pretty stock lists. Um, I don't believe uh, the Newer Shadow is playing any new additions in their deck. Yeah, it is, it is not a single Unleash card. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, uh, Hammer Time here, playing, uh, playing also very, very stock uh, Zen Sacrifice list. No Unleash cards to be, uh, to be accounted for. So, uh, All right. yeah, how, uh, how, how, how are you enjoying this little, this little blast from the past from, from, from last week? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't mind a little break from the new cards, though I, I do think that the new cards are exciting and definitely curious to see new fun things with that. But, uh, you know, a little beat down with some giant 
some giant uh, units. There's there's no problem with that. Yeah, I, I do enjoy me some big, big, beefy life steel beaters. Uh, newer shadow here making a huge swing in life. Wow, hammer time leaving back the world bear. Huh. Oh. World joiner. Uh speaking world circle, joiner, actually sorry. quite a great quite a great top deck here. Depending on the options. Uh and speaking circle will also kill uh hammer times Xenon uh Xenon Temple at the end of turn. Yeah, quite the draw. Although not the best uh RNG it looks like. These spells are okay. That was, oh, we uh, did find a kill. Harmless oh, question. Was that harmless question? That was harmless question indeed. Oh, a twisted, twisted farmer with uh, with regen here. Regen completely stopping uh, New York, uh, New York Shadow's uh, lifestyle momentum. That was a lethal attack before the uh, before the ambush. So ants. That was a big swing. It's kind of what uh, kind of what Twisted Farmer does. So Rat King can use one of these uh, mandrakes to do something. Exploit takes down the Pride Leader. Okay. I don't think we see any plundering here. Meanwhile, you know, free free attacks from these uh, from these little vines. Oh, we're gonna take down the circle. Makes sense. That's why everybody else is staying home. And then I expect we're gonna sacrifice one of those mandrakes to either pop Aegis or shrink the life steal. Not, not a huge use in, in shrinking the life steal. I think this is probably just an Aegis pop. We're not really afraid of the Aegis unit because of the 1010, so I, I think I would just try and reduce the, the lifesteal to close out the game as fast as possible. Alright, so New Shadow just draws power. That's not too exciting. Oh my god, another Twisted Farmer. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah, twi Twisted Farmer can generate... Some absolutely, absolutely brutal game swings. So uh, two, three, two, three ambush, and uh, you can you can pay the very, very cheap amplify one for as many mandrakes as your heart and maximum power desires. So it looks like we're trying to figure out if we're gonna kill the eight eight, or if I guess you can't jump it because it has overwhelm. So yeah, so we we have to kill it. Yeah, the uh, the 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 life swing is not great, but you know if you can if you can take down the biggest friend on the board, and then you have uh, you have a world joiner just just going for your opponent's face. It seems pretty good. Yep, all the damage block, newer shadow up to twenty four, but pretty uh, pretty sparse board. Gonna see them crack cover the gemstone here. Ooh, Getting eight okay. more vestige. That definitely helps to keep us alive. We're going to take Not... a lot of damage here. Uh, well, eight more vestige does require nine mana in order uh, in order to play a uh, heart rule, which is which would be the ideal situation for Neo Shadow. Oh, yeah. and because we sacked the relic, we're down to seven power yep. instead of eight. See, we we had eight a second ago, so it's like okay, if we draw power, we're all right. But you're right. That age worn vestige is a little awkward here. Yeah, covet the just gemstone, unfortunately, not just an ultimate. It also requires it also requires sacrifice. You see world joiner's uh, beautiful visual effect here. So I'm not sure if the Aegis is gonna stop the World Joiner from growing or not. No, it doesn't. Okay. It, it does not stops the Aegis. Yeah, eternal eternal uh eternal's uh eternal's card effects uh Will go off independently of uh, uh, of if they get stopped by ages or not, which is uh, just a good little good little assurance to have. Um, 
we stop we have definitely we have, we have to have that power here in the form of uh of uh stormhole plating which does get us to uh to eight power which is one away from the age of Ashes, as well as giving us two armor uh unfortunately yeah. the, the dino nest will flip which uh will be lethal regardless so see a scoop there close but because we sacked that power it was a little tough to get there all right well that is the end of round two um we're gonna take another quick break while we set up round three stick with us more throne action to come <laughs> 